Hi, my name is Usman Hassan, and this video is going to be my um, submission for my in-class reflection for uh, Aboriginal learners. Uh, this is going to be based on uh, the guest speaker's presentation, uh, Sherry Peoples, who did Heads Held High, uh, as well as a blanket exercise, and finally uh, based around the uh, Aboriginal studies or kind of European settler lesson we had uh, in our 8PO2 class. Now I'd like to point out that I'm uh, doing a, an oral presentation or on a video instead of submitting one uh, written. And uh, one thing I, I've learned uh, through my education is that indigenous people spread their knowledge and, and share their learning through storytelling. And that's very, very important to them. That's how they talk about their traditions, their people's beliefs, and, and their creation stories. So um, that's one of the reasons why I've decided to use this method to uh, submit my presentation or assignment. Um, I think it's really important to experience somebody else's uh, culture or how they learn. You know, you can't you gotta walk a mile in their shoes to really understand what it's like to be them. And so today we're I'm gonna discuss basically you know differentiating and integrating Drake's KDB model into a curriculum or a lesson plan um, for Aboriginal learners. But more more importantly, this is more likely gonna be how I would integrate my learning from these three experiences into you know my own classroom as an educator one day. And the first thing I would I would definitely do is take this idea of, you know, oral storytelling and, and implement it in the classroom somehow, um, as opposed to, for example, you know, giving written instructions, you know, why not, why not uh, show a video or a story instead of having written instructions, that's, that's number one. But uh, one of my goals is to teach up north maybe one day, if ever given the opportunity and, and if I could ever, you know, justify the time and uh, you know work on the reserves as a teacher or educator or whatever uh, and uh, really really you know make a difference and, and help those Aboriginal children learn and so knowing about their culture is step one um, storytelling is important um, really when it comes to being a teaching diversity it's it's the more you know and the more you can facilitate um, that will help you out in the long run, um, and that and that's a big reflection on me. And so, I mean, I could say that's the B part of the uh, no do B model. Uh, you know, goal setting and reflection. You know, I could I could really say, hey, you know, I'm I'm I wanna I wanna be able to really get on the the level of the child uh, and really you know learn what works for them and uh, kind of reflect on what I've done and, and improve that. But that, that can be translated into the children, too. I mean, we can make realistic goals for them and, uh, you know, have them learn the way we want them to learn. Uh, I, I think telling the story of Indigenous people is really important. Uh, that was made very clear um, by my classmates in the blanket exercise. I mean, that was a very, very powerful experience. And that was, it was a real eye-opener, especially if you don't really know about what went on. You know, you could you could be easily easily one of the many people who have no idea what you know what had happened in the past with residential schools the 60s scoop the the treaties and getting rid of all the land and disease you know it was horrendous and so to put this into perspective and having a visual and and really really you know participating in such an activity is a real eye opener and that's definitely one thing i would definitely you know implement with my students one day um, having that, uh, having this lesson would, would be a great tool for them to, you know, really start thinking and, 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 and turn these, these facts into, you know, topics and these topics and thoughts into maybe concepts, concepts, you know, we could learn in social studies, we could learn in history, we could learn in, in anything really. And that's, and that's our no part of the KDB model. Really if it's interesting then why wouldn't then why wouldn't somebody want to learn about it if i and, and and here's my personal experience you know with aboriginal or or indigenous studies i i didn't i i had no clue 
about what happened. I, I vaguely recall probably in my grade six or seven years that, you know, we, we were talking about European settlers and, you know, so-and-so came to, to uh, North America and the fur trade. But this whole part of taking the land and reserves was was left out. I have no idea what it is. I'm sure my parents don't know. I'm sure my neighbors who are older, elderly, in fact, they, they probably don't know. And and for me to uh, one day go into, say, a grade six classroom and, and implement this exercise, that would be that would be an eye opener for not only my grade sixes, but they would go home and tell people, and and that's how you spread their message, and 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 that's that's wonderful learning, and we can go from there. You know, inquiry based learning is asking that big question and really focusing on what we can, what what the students are interested in learning, but also, you know, making it authentic through these these examples. Um, one of the resources I f had found uh, on my Sakai um, page was this here. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it's called uh, Achieving Aboriginal Student Success. And this document really gives me some insight on, you know, how I can plan for children and, and uh, certain activities I can do that are, that, you know, give that lens, Aboriginal lens per se. Um, for example, for kindergarten, there's an activity called Gifts from the Inuits of Arctic. And it gives you the materials, it gives you the background knowledge, it gives you, you know, what we're going to learn. And you can really implement that, you know, even as young as kindergarten, you know, we can say, hey, we made whatever we made. Even something as simple as uh, a basic igloo. And, you know, we can discuss, oh, hey, so did they actually live in igloos? What are they made of? What makes them warm? Who lived in igloos? And then what did they wear? It's all, it's all that inquiry-based model. And this learning through these uh, past few weeks about indigenous studies and my you know some previous class I took in, in in my undergrad about Aboriginal culture really helps me shape what I want to do with my students in the future and, and and it helps me reflect upon you know not reflect but make a goal for myself and and, and really try it and reflect on how I would want to do this um, and, and that's and that's it's tough and it takes a lot of practice but I think it's well worth the effort when it comes to diversity I mean really anything any anything is challenging you you have to really do your research and figure out okay so you know we have a child who comes from say you know where i'm from and we read you know right to left well you know how are we gonna you know i have to know that to help somebody who uh is learning to read and, and, and may not have experience reading like that um one thing i found really interesting was uh in our in our very very first aboriginal um lesson I want to say uh Kathy and I bet you're watching this you taught me this uh was the danger of a single story and perception and that was and that was pretty interesting because I never thought of it that way and really looking into the dangers of a single story and and, and you know knowing that there's usually another side to a story or multiple sides is is key and you know you don't know the whole truth until you have Wow, I am sorry, my camera just cut out, so, uh, ran out of memory. But anyways, you don't know the whole story until you have all the pieces of it, if that makes sense. And piecing together that story and making your own perception on it really gives you a different look on what you virtually knew based on one, um, side of the story. And so, you know, that's, it's, like I said, the danger of a single story is really important, but, uh, that being said, knowing about Aboriginal perspectives is very important because, you know, we're given one perspective and now we have another one and, and it's vastly different than the other one. So, you know, what we make of it and what we can learn from it is what, you know, helps us become better learners. Um, I'm going to conclude here. Um, there's a ton I could talk about right now, but uh, that's that's the basics of what we're going to talk about in terms of my reflection based on these three uh these three uh, sessions on Aboriginal studies. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, maybe in the future I could record another video like this one.